the 17 email signature do's and don'ts. As an email signature software company, we see a lot of signatures. We see what people get right and what they get wrong. So in time-honored fashion, here's a checklist of the most common points even savvy users get wrong. Number one, do make it social. Social media is on the mind of every marketer right now. Use your signature to connect social with mail. Give contacts a taste of your content and add a social media link. Unilever added a follow link and went from 40,000 followers to 235,000. Number two, don't do it yourself. The number one biggest mistake on signatures is inconsistency across the company because each employee made their own. One might have a logo from 1994. The next might be using a logo that's a thousand pixels wide beside a misspelled address. Use the same template across your company. Make sure every signature matches a professional, stylish format you've approved. Number three, do use the right tools. It sounds vague, but keep it in your mind. It's a signature, not a Word document, not a web page, and not an image on its own. If you know HTML, code it accordingly. Avoid some of the pitfalls we'll detail further on. If you don't know HTML, don't use Microsoft Outlook or Word to build your template. They'll format it in their own way. Any other program or another version of the same program may interpret the layout differently and display it incorrectly. Number four, do keep it slim. Whether it's Outlook's preview pane before you open a message or the window after you double click on it, very wide signatures will not render well. The industry standard is about 650 pixels. We even say that a signature should go a little slimmer at 600 to make sure nothing gets locked off the edge. Number five, do use tables. For all your layout needs, use tables. Remember, you can simply leave the borders transparent if you don't want to see a grid. We're just talking about using them to place each part of your design. That way, we know exactly how wide it will be and no more. And we know that each part of the signature will appear in the right place. No job titles getting squashed together or images appearing explicably in the wrong spot. Number six, do make it simple. Keep the layout as robust as possible. Let the images and links make an impact, not the way they're arranged. If you try something over the top or ambitious, be prepared to back it up with lots of testing. In fact, if you have a decent way to test how it will look in lots of different email clients, Outlook, Apple Mail, Gmail, then be our guest. But be sure that it's solid enough to stay well presented in lots of circumstances. Number seven, don't use bullets. Bullet points tend to render strangely from client to client. What Gmail thinks of as a bullet point differs from Outlook's definition. To keep them all happy, just avoid bullet points altogether. If need be, use different rows in your table to get that list look. Number eight, don't animate. Avoid animation and signatures. In Outlook, in most corporate email clients, you will not be able to watch an embedded video. You won't even see the animations and GIFs. Number nine, do use inline CSS. This is more technical. Inline CSS and email HTML go hand in hand. A lot of standard W3C approved methods won't work with the programs we use to read email. Get around them using inline CSS. If you're not technical, use an editor made specifically for signatures that will automatically turn your design into code that follows all these rules. Number 10, do write full length HTML. For the same reason, write out the HTML longhand. A lot of email platforms won't recognize the shortcuts you're used to. For the non-developers among us, that means you shouldn't just try to use a direct marketing email CMS or Word to build your template. Use a tool that was made just for email signatures. Number 11, do use JPEGs. PNGs are not right for email. That may defy some of the accepted practice you've been taught around the web, but of course it will. This isn't a web page, it's an email. Choose JPEGs and GIFs over PNGs under almost all email circumstances. And don't forget to use the no sent tag on all images so they'll appear correctly in the email. Number 12, do restrict image dimensions. Don't just rely on the size of the image being correct. Hard code exactly how wide and high it will be in HTML. If you don't, Outlook might render the image strangely. Again, for the non-coders reading this, that means you shouldn't just use a web CMS or Word to dry and draw out your signature. It doesn't work that way. Number 13, do find the right ratio. Try not to let the images overwhelm the text. Too large, too numerous, or too tacky? Don't lose the email in that signature. It's hard. Every email is different. What looks right with blocks and blocks of text will look strange under a single sentence. Change how your signature looks on replies. 
The first email in a conversation may be longer, so a larger, bolder signature can make a professional first impression. Then, on replies, use a simpler, slimmer setup to remind, not repulse. Number 14. Don't forget alt text. Remember image alt text. You never know where your mail may end up after it's forwarded. With alt text, anyone who gets that email can hover over an image and get an idea of exactly what it does. I say does rather than is, because each image in your signature tends to perform a function. A like us on Facebook, alt text on that social media link, or a sign up for our event on that banner for your upcoming exhibition can explain what that icon offers. It makes your links a little more inviting. Number 15. Do shrink your links. Most links will be behind images. They're fine as they are. But when you have links visible in the signature, say a web colon exclaimer.com in your contact details, you'll want to keep them as short as possible. For many that could be using great resources like Bitly, Owly, if you have a web admin, use a shorter URL and ask him or her to set up a redirect that takes visitors to the real page, which can have as long and complex a URL as it needs. Number 16, don't break the law. It's not exciting, but it's the law. Legal disclaimers are required in many parts of the world. Like can spam, stating you need your physical business address on mail, or Circular 230, forcing you to declare what's advice and what's opinion. Look into what laws apply to you and what's needed to comply with them. Watch out for these regulations and stay on top of changes to your business. You never know when that new service you offer or that new market you've entered might take you into new legal territory. Number 17, don't worry. Signatures may be a massive asset, but they don't need to be a massive effort. There are a few smart ways to change yours without bothering your IT department or your colleagues with updates, changes, corrections, and so on. But don't stop at the 17 do's and don'ts. Check out our free email signatures for dummies guide. Click here or visit exclaimer.com forward slash dummies dash guide.